want to thank you and the council and the city for um, helping the Bluegrass Council of the Blind as the only nonprofit organization exclusively serving the needs of adults with vision impairments in Lexington. Uh, we are a funded agency through that program right now this year, and we are very grateful for that. So thank you. And we're excited that uh, there may be more funds available in the next year. So um, we also wanted to uh, have some of our guests here today to ask some questions. So we're gonna go ahead and open it up. Please, if you're not going to ask a question, please stay muted. Um, Richard is our host. Will they need to click the unmute to ask a question, Richard? Yeah, they should be able to do that on their own if they need to. I, I can help anybody that I can see on the camera if they wave at me, I'll, I'll unmute them also. Okay, they can wave or they can um, do the raise your hand. So if you're on by telephone, to raise your hand uh, to be unmuted, you would press star nine. And then if you need to unmute yourself, it's star six. And then it's the same uh, to lower your hand is star nine again and to unmute or to remute yourself, it's star six. And then for those on computers, you can use the space bar to unmute. And you can also use the um, alt A. Okay, so we'll open it up. Hi, Mayor. Um, I'm Linda Stewart, and I live um, really close to Boston Road. I could tell you my address, but um, we have, as I walk out of my house and turn to the right, um, we have cracked sidewalks all the way down, like I could turn to the right and walk, and then when it turns, there's a real long block. It's like about a two block walk filled with cracked sidewalks to the point where they slope down all the way. They, When you're walking, your left foot is, I don't know how many inches lower. I mean, I don't know about inches, but it's at least, it feels like a couple inches lower than your right foot. So there's it's unlevel and also very many cracks in that area. And I've gotten to the place where I have to be really careful about um, cracks now. And then there's also cracks as I just as I walk down the other street, um, Gregory Way. Um, there's a bunch of cracks until you get into you get to Wyndham Hills. You can turn right. There's still cracks, and then. Um, and then it smooths off, and it's so pleasant to walk on smooth sidewalk, but you have to, you know, you, you, I just would like to even just be able to, if I want to just walk around my own block and not have all these cracks everywhere. Yeah. The other, the other can, question. Can uh, I ask have, you a quick question before you get off the sidewalks? Gregory yeah, yeah. Way to Wyndham Hills, and was it actually, was the other street actually Boston Road? Well, I live on... I live on Gregory Way. I was and just wondering what the other street was because I can do something. It's off about of Gregory. This. Gregory. Um, let's see, Gregory Way. Yes. If I walk to the corner of Gregory, um, I think it's connected with um, Lee Adams. I think that's the okay. other street. Okay. Well, but I, I mean, there are help. tons. I mean, it's just awful, awful. Okay. Especially on my on my uh, block area. Then the other thing is we have to pay quite a bit of money for our trash pickup every quarter, and we're so close to people that don't have to pay anything. Are you on city service or private service? Private service. Yes. Well, you know what the in order to get city service which I think is what you're talking about, you have to have a majority of the uh, people who live on that street vote for it. Uh, oh. If you're interested in pursuing it, I can ask someone to contact you. But it, uh -huh. it, is, a, it is a petition process. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I... Uh, that's how it works. The old, you know, the old county got to choose whether they went on or went off. And uh -huh. so we're kind of a hodgepodge. Right. So 
if if you're interested in pursuing it with people in your neighborhood, I would encourage you to call my office. And again, that is 258-3100. And we can help you with that uh -huh. process with you and your neighbors. And how would that change our payment? Would we get extra tax somewhere else or? Yes. It, the, would... the city service is a uh, property tax and it includes the Herbie, the Rosie recycle pickup, the uh, yard waste pickup, and it includes leaf, vacuum leaf uh -huh. pickup. So, so would, I wonder if I'd be better off with the city. I would imagine I would, but um, rather than the private, I don't know. If you, if you give us a call, maybe we can help you work through that. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, thank you. Thank you, you Linda. And I just want yeah. to interject really quick. If people would maybe refrain from giving personal information just because we are recording this, oh. we'll see if we can try to mute that out for the recording. But I just, I don't want people giving addresses or phone numbers or things like that just because we are yeah. recording it. Okay, thank you. Right, okay. I'll, I'll edit that uh, out if you want me to. Uh, just yes, to thank you. I have a question. Go ahead, Marty. Okay. Um, yeah, my question is <clears throat> about the roads, the city roads. Um, they're all in terrible shape. I mean, try to get a form plate on point A to B. It's just bumpy everywhere, everywhere you go. And I know, I know it doesn't apply to the county roads, but I'm talking about just the city. And I like Main Street, man. It's horrible. Uh, the roads are just, I don't know why they're so bad. Um, you had that in your budget, uh, you, know, you mentioned roads in your budget, but I haven't, I haven't seen any, any work on roads here lately, and I'm wondering uh, if there's anything going to be done about that. Of course, roads are super important. I have $14 million in my budget for road paving, and mm -hmm. of course that gets spread out across the city, and right. the um, the way we do that is the roads are, um, they're rated on a scale of zero to a hundred. And we try first to resurface those roads that fall below 65. And last year, because of the budget uh, difficulties that we had, we really only put $7 million into paving. And of course, some of our roads are state roads and they come into town, so we don't um, we don't pave those. And then I have a million dollars in my budget to pave a segment of Man of War. Every year we try to pave one part of Man of War so we can keep it paved. If that helps you any. Well, I was thinking about like Main Street because when people come into town for like ball games or whatever, they, you know, they drive down these roads and. They, all bumpy and like they are the way they are and um, people don't want to be I'd say people don't want to be drive their cars in that kind of uh, way because it messes their vehicles up you know their tires and their you know use more gas and uh, wear and tear on the vehicle and and so I mean it's it's really hard on people uh, I know it's helping out the other people who who sell gas and work on cars and sell the parts and you know, it's, just, it's helping them but it's it's hurting other people who are, who are driving the cars, you know. And that's uh, why I, my concern is about the roads. Yes, I do. And uh, so you know, I am taking notes and I wrote down Main Street. So, right. um, you know, we have uh, a lot of streets here. So we're going to put oh, yeah. 14 million into paving this year. So okay. I'll uh, speak with our engineers about Main Street and see what the situation is there. Thanks so much. Okay, thank you. If I may interject, we have a couple of people who've raised their hand. Um, I'd like to move to uh, letting them speak if we can. Um, I'm not sure who the phone number is ending in uh, 3349, but you've had your hand raised for quite some time. I want to let you go ahead and talk next. This is, a, this is Arthur Absher. I'm a board member. I want to thank you, Mayor, for your leadership through many years before your mayorship. Thank you. I've been a volunteer uh, 
with a number of nonprofits for many years myself. And as a board member of DCB, I'm very appreciative of the efforts that the city is placing to help fund that agency, our agency. Uh, through my many years volunteering, I didn't expect to need services, but I found when my vision began declining several years ago, the BCB stepped in when I finally made contact, providing a number of services, including simple things like picking up information and conversation or in meetings. The simplest thing <laughs> was very profound as as I finally admitted my declining vision was a problem with putting toothpaste on a brush. Mm -hmm. Somebody said in passing the meeting, just put it in your mouth. That never occurred to me to do that. <laughs> but uh, it's worked wonderfully. <laughs> but the technology, uh, the mentoring program, the Genuine uh, caring and assistance provided by everybody I've been associated with at Bluegrass Council of the Blind has been very informative and supportive. And I want to thank you for the city's support. Learned thank a few you. things during your speech. I thought I kept up with things pretty well through the years, but you've informed me otherwise. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. I think we met many years ago, did we not? We did. I think we yes. were both fan parents at Lafayette. Yes. Now many years ago. Oh, well, it's great to talk with you. Thank you. The Thank next you, person. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, go ahead. The next person who has their hand raised is David. If you want to go ahead, David. David White. Hi, David. Hello, I am uh, I work here at the council. I'm our uh, director of uh, finance and accounting. I live in Bourbon County and I'm, I'm uh, legally blind myself and I commute in. Um, we happen to have a, uh, a, a jobs bus, I guess, if you will, from um, in Bourbon County that takes the surrounding areas. My question is really about overall regional transportation planning. Uh, is there anything being done for that? You know, I mean, we're not just, it's not just Fayette County anymore. I mean, Scott is connected to, you know, Jessman, the same as Bourbon's connected to Clark, you know, it's just, but to get around from county to county is a little hard here. We're in Louisville, at least in the metro area, you know, Tark, when I used to live in Louisville, just moved up here a few, about 10 years ago, you know, Tark there was running reverse commute, commuter routes to um, Oldham County when I left. Um, is, is there anything... It, being planned, any, even any conversation for an expanded regional transportation system, public transit? That's a, that's a good question, David. And I'll tell you, the city over the years has had many conversations with Lextran, which as you probably know, is not part of city government. And they had a couple of pilot programs where they had a park and ride in another county and then they ran a bus into Fayette for people who work here. And uh, quite honestly, what happened with those was that not very many people rode them. And so they, um, you know, they determined that they were not successful as pilot programs. And so I know that Lextran has looked at different things over the years and uh, Lexington does partner on a regional basis with Jessamine County through our Metropolitan Planning Organization, but it's only with Jessamine, and that's a that's set up by the state. So um, the regional transportation is somewhat of a difficult issue because in order to make it work, there has to be a mass, certain mass of people who will use it. I think that's where Louisville has an advantage over us because they're quite a bit larger. So, um, you know, at, I guess a smaller bus 
might work, except the cost of a smaller bus is mostly the driver and benefits. We've learned that along the way. And so um, we just need to keep putting our heads together and try to figure it out. Okay, well, thanks a lot. Thank you. And thanks for your uh, work every day to get here. Yes, this is um, Teresa again. I have a, a interjection or, or comment on that. And question, how long ago was that pilot program? And what do you, you have any idea what the marketing of that was? Because the, um, the visually impaired population and other uh, disabled populations that don't have personal transportation, I just wonder if maybe they might have been able to participate if, if it wasn't marketed to them, we possibly didn't know about it. Mm -hmm. uh, Teresa, I think if I recall, it was about maybe 10 years ago and it went on for about a year or so, uh, long enough for them to have numbers to count. Now, I don't, I saw lots of marketing, but I don't know who received the marketing, you know, and you're okay. absolutely right. If the right groups aren't getting the information, it sometimes does not get the proper attention. So I right. think it's been about 10 years. I believe so might, be, might be time to consider that <laughs> pilot program but, you know, again, we, possibly. Yes, we can propose that again to Lextran and their board, um, see if they would be interested again in trying it. And we'd be happy to work with you on sharing that information with the visually impaired populations um, in surrounding counties. We do cover uh, information and referral. We have many, uh, I think this last fiscal year we had clients that we served in 72 different Kentucky counties. Okay. Um, primarily, the majority are here in Lexington, but uh, these services are not available anywhere else in the state. So we are doing our best to work with Christy at the Senior Center and all of the different um, agencies to share information. And one unique thing about us is that we do offer information in audible format for those people that might not be able to read large print or read braille, um, they might not have access to the, the flyers and, and information that's shared by other agencies, but we share it audibly too. So yeah. um, we'd be happy to help share that information if that ever became available again. Okay. And, you know, uh, you also reminded me to David's question um, some years ago. Uh, Lexington leaders talked uh, with other folks in the region about rail. You know, a lot of people come and go from Frankfurt, for example, for jobs, and um, about whether that was even possible to do, um, you know, rail lines for passengers. But what we learned is it is extremely expensive. <laughs> And one of the things in consideration was a high-speed rail to Cincinnati. And that would have been well over a billion dollars cost to get that up and running and, and uh, constructed. So um, I, I appreciate your um, support too. And so I'll have some conversation with the director at Lextran and see what they're thinking in terms of regional transportation. If I can just interject, um, it would also maybe be useful. We've not specifically mentioned um, wheels, but that's one of the services we are specifically talking about here. Oh, just, yes. for, just for clarity, I wanted to make sure that that was at least mentioned. Yes, um, thank you. Um, our next... Uh, person is Kimberly May. I believe you wanted to interject. Will she need to unmute herself? I just asked her to unmute. Hi, Kimberly. Uh, no, I didn't have my hand up. <laughs> oh, well, hi anyway. <laughs> well, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> Okay, I saw David had his hand back up or did you just, were just forgetting to put it down? 
Um, well, actually, I, I, I did. I did want to just say one last thing before we get off the topic. And, um, you know, not just with with Lextrian serving other counties, no, but you know, like I said, the service that I ride in on is um, FTSB Federated Transportation of the Bluegrass. They, you know, mainly it's a Medicaid transporter, but, you know, they, um, in some of the surrounding counties, Bourbon, Harrison, Nicholas, and then even out in Brown, when they run a, a city bus route for, in Moorhead, they do okay. public transit. If there was just a way to link those all together, like they'll take me into Fayette to work or they would take me to, to Scott to work. But since there's public transit in those counties, they don't, they'll, it's a take me one place, drop me off, pick me up from the same place. Um, it, 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 it's just, if, it would seem like it would be real easy if they could just link up in some sort of fashion and just have some reciprocity. That doesn't, mm -hmm. You know, that, that would seem like it would be just a real easy starting point. Mm -hmm. To have the linkage. That makes good sense. I think you're a practical person. Well, I'm an accountant, so. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. That's actually a good idea. I'm, I'm going to mention that when I talk to the, the director of Lextran and, and see if they've done any thinking about that. Thank you. Hey. He is a very practical person. He has been our finance director for about four years now and does a fabulous oh. job. And just wanted to let you know that uh, five of our seven employees here are people with vision impairments. And um, we would love to hire more. And it would be great if we could, you know, extend that to people from other counties to be able yeah. to come in and work with us. So mm -hmm. great point. Oh, yes. Any other questions? All right, I guess that will wrap it up here. Mayor Gordon, thank you so much for your time and for all of the information you shared with us today. Um, thank you for being here and for your leadership in Lexington as, oh, as Arthur. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on one second. I think Gary was waving at us. Were you needing something, Gary? Did you have a question? No, he doesn't. Okay, never mind. Sorry. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. we'll go ahead and wrap it up and, and let the mayor um, go about her business. And if uh, the guests would like to stay on, we can mm -hmm. do some announcements and some follow up among ourselves. Again, thank you again, Mayor. Thank you so much to all of you. I really appreciate you very much. And as I say, if you have some ideas, please don't hesitate to call my office and we would love to hear what they are and pursue them. Thank you for having me. Have Wonderful. a great day. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. I hope you found that information helpful and encouraging. And we will um, make a few announcements here and then we'll do our follow-up survey. Um, if uh, so for announcements, I wanted to share that we will be starting some in-person activities. Uh, we're gonna start with um, the community outing. Instead of being an inning, we will be doing a community outing on May 10th. That's on a Monday from one to 2 p.m. We're gonna do a walk at the Arboretum. Um, this is just going to be a leisurely walk uh, to enjoy the springtime, the, the smell of flowers, the beautiful uh, trees that are in bloom, and get a little bit of exercise and encourage that for our, our health initiative. Again, that's on May 10th from 1 to 2. We'll be meeting at the Arboretum at the main entrance there by the main building. There's a small uh, retaining wall and we'll meet there. And we'll try to get a picnic table. So following, if we want to sit and, and enjoy some time together talking, I know it's been a really long time since we've been able to meet in person. And um, since the governor lifted the mask restrictions or face coverings for outdoor events smaller than 1,000, um, as long as we don't have over 1,000 people join us, we'll be good to be able to do that event outdoors without our masks. So. If you want to continue to wear it, you are more than welcome to, uh, but if you choose not to, then it is not mandated any longer uh, by the uh, mayor's office, I'm, I'm sorry, by the uh, CDC, and the governor has lifted that mandate. Um, 
we will be taking uh, RSVPs for a small group mentoring meeting on May 12th. And that does require an application before you join those meetings. So if you are already participating in that program and you'd like to RSVP, please give me a call at the office. If you have not been participating in that, but would like to get an application and join in on the small groups, we're gonna keep it um, very small for the in-person on May 12th. We're gonna limit it to eight people. If we get more than eight people that want to join in on that, um, we will probably split into two different groups on two different days just to keep um, the ability to kind of social distance uh, because that will be indoors. And so we'll still need to keep the mask and the, the social distancing. Um, and then our big announcement is the membership meeting. That will be on June 6th, which is a Sunday afternoon. And that will be an in-person picnic and it will be outdoors. That will um, kind of in the past, we have had the opportunity to set up our tables and chairs in the back parking lot. And the landlord is uh, going to put up some caution tape and some cones and block off an area for us in the shade in the back of the parking lot. Hopefully there won't be much traffic on that Sunday afternoon and we'll be able to meet in person uh, being outdoors, there will not be a requirement for masks. Again, it is welcome. You're welcome to do that if you're more comfortable continuing to wear a mask. Um, I, I heard someone mention that they thought that our programs were requiring people to be vaccinated to participate. And I just want to provide clarity that is not correct. We are participating with the Rotary Club and the City of Lexington with encouraging people to be vaccinated, but that is not a requirement for our programs and to join in our activities. We feel that's a personal choice and we encourage people to do it. We think it's a good idea, but we are not requiring that and you may make that choice. Um, if you do attend these events and you are unvaccinated, that is your choice. And just realize that, you know, you, you may be more at risk. So we just wanted to clarify that that is not um, going to be required. We are not going to ask you to reveal if you have or have not been vaccinated. Um, those are my announcements. And if uh, anyone wants to share any other information, um, please raise your hand if you have any other announcements that I forgot. Um, Richard, are you able to unmute everyone at this time? Because I'd like to do the survey of- Absolutely. Okay. Hold on, hold on. Sure. I'm going to ask the follow-up questions for this and um and Teresa, you would, this is Sarah before yes, you Sarah. Can bet, what is the time of the June sixth event? You didn't give the time or I didn't hear it. I believe it is five to six thirty. But I'm gonna have when to check I got my notes. The call, I put it in my calendar at six, and I thought that was kind of late. So you think it's at five? Yes, we we were looking at six to seven thirty, but I believe that was changed to uh, five to six thirty. And I'm I'm pretty certain on that, but I need to go back and check my notes to make sure that's what the committee said. Uh, it will be coming out. Everyone will be getting notification. If you have an email address with us on file, we will email it. If we have your mailing address, we will be mailing this to all members. If you are a member in 2021, we're going to send out the notification of the meeting and there will be voting. There will be a short business meeting because we will have some bylaw changes that we would like to present. And so that information will be sent out to all 2021 members to review at least 30 days prior to that meeting. So you should receive that um, in early May. And that will also have the exact time. Uh, and I believe it's uh, five to 6.30 is the, the meeting here. And the business meeting I believe will be uh, 
beginning at six, but again, so do we bring a everyone. dish? Do you want us to bring a dish? No, we're going to do box lunches. Uh, thank you for offering that. But just for, again, we're still in a pandemic, even though we are um, being seeing some light at the end of the tunnel. Um, we feel that box lunches would be much safer, um, less handling of food and things like that. So we will be providing a free box lunch, but it is required for you to RSVP um, the week before. So that's on a Sunday. So we need you to RSVP by Thursday, uh, the week before. I guess that would land uh, 31st. Six, five. No, I, no, I mean the 30th. It's a week. That's to be the 30th. Uh, well, it wouldn't be a full week before it, just by that Thursday. Oh, approximately a week. Yeah, within the week before. So yeah, if you can buy the by June first, um, give us your RSVP because we are going to have to uh, make extra accommodations with moving everything outside, setting up, um, ordering the the box lunches. We will need your RSVP. If you're not able to join us in person, it will also be available by Zoom. If you're not comfortable meeting in person, if you're not able to get here. Um, we will still offer that by Zoom. I cannot guarantee the sound quality since it will be an outdoor meeting. We're going to do our very best to have um, the, the microphones and everything set up to where those joining by Zoom can hear and can participate in the discussion if there is any. But um, I can't guarantee how well that's going to work. But uh, please, if you would like to join us in person, please, please, please RSVP by June 1st to let us know so we can make sure that we have um, everything set up and we're uh, ready to go for the, the size of group we're going to have. What is the date for the outdoor meeting? Sunday, June 6th. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. That's the membership meeting. And we will be voting on a couple of bylaws and the mission statement updating. And all of that will come out in advance. The, the proposed changes will come out to you by email and in writing. And we will have it available on audio format for those that prefer audio version as well. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do our surveys. Everyone is unmuted. Um, and so if you would just reply with yes, um uh or no we do have a uh, rick is still muted he's the only one other than myself i mute myself because of background noises but sure um, okay so um if you learned new information today would you please respond with yes or no yes 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 yes, yes. yes. okay i think rick said yes but he's still muted like i said he Sorry. can nod or shake his head no. Can he nod? And He's if not. you found the information helpful to you or someone within your family today, please respond with yes or no. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. And um, one more question. Uh, would the information covered today help you uh, become more independent or feel safer in your community? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Wonderful. Really. All right. Great. Thank you very much. Um, Richard, if you could screenshot uh, how many people we have on doing that response. Um, uh, I took a screenshot earlier too. We had a, a maximum of 14 people on here. Some of them dropped off during the meeting. Okay. Uh, during, during, the, during the survey here at the end, we have 10. I'll 10. Take okay. I'll take a quick that's, snapshot of them as well. That's, thank you. I needed the 10 because I, I have to, 100% of 10 people responded that way is what I have to record. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Does anyone have any announcements or questions before we go ahead and log off? Thank you, Teresa. We you have 11 job. plus I'm on here. Yep. Oh, okay. So you've All got right. a we count Sarah, that's right. 
So there's two on with Gary Faulkner. So thank you very much, everyone. Have a wonderful week. We will be doing food distribution this afternoon. And uh, so if you're participating in that, be watching for it. And um, hopefully we'll see you all. If not before, we'll see you at the membership meeting. Right. Have a great day. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.